Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. I redownloaded Hinge and I automatically deleted it again. It is scary out here. Why is it scary though? I would have gone with tough, but scary, maybe I should be on Hinge to understand. Anyway, what did you expect? Did you really thought you're gonna reinstall Hinge and two days later you're gonna be married? Cause you know, it doesn't really work like that. You might need to put in some effort yourself. Next time maybe try Bumble and never text anyone first. Okay, so I'm currently at the beach and I just saw a guy who is so my type. Oh my god! <laughs> oh hey, look, it's me. Or someone who looks like me. But knowing not even that guy wants you, how does it make you feel? What is your ideal age in a man? 20 to 22. Ideal race? I don't care. Minimum height? Mm, six foot. Minimum income? Well, you have to be employed, so a good job, whatever that means. Do you have a number? 100,000. That's a pretty <laughs> good job. <laughs> the probability of you finding your ideal man is a 0.25%. Not surprised. It's rough <laughs> out here. You don't care about his income, but you went straight to 100k. So it kind of does matter, doesn't it? It's rough out here. Is it really? Or are you just making it rough for yourself? What's your ideal age in a man? Anywhere between like 20 and 25. Ideal race? Any. Minimum height. They just can't be shorter than me. So, 5'4". I wish I had a hat, I'd give it to her. That's a cap. Oh. Minimum income. That doesn't matter. I right, put any. Yeah, just say any. Alright, the probability of you finding your oh, ideal man is an 89% chance. Period. Woo! It doesn't seem to be that rough for her. 89% chance compared to 0.25 for you. It seems there is a little difference, isn't it? This was a big hit with the misogynist last time, so let's give it a try. I have another story about a right way to approach a woman and a wrong way to approach a woman. These were two different occasions. It wasn't the same night. I was at the self-checkout at the grocery store, and from a peripheral, I could see a young man approaching me, but he stayed far away, distant. And he called. He said, excuse me, I'm sorry, may I approach you? I'm just, I just wanted to talk. And I was in the middle of ringing up. <laughs> so I'd already put in the cash and everything, but I was like, oh, sure, hi, what's up? And he kept his distance. He did not come super close to me. And he said, I'm so sorry, but I walked in and I saw you. I just had to say hi. I couldn't walk past such a stunning woman and not at least say hi. I said, oh, well, thank you so much. And as he's saying, it's like my receipt is printing and the cash, the change fell onto the floor. <laughs> and he said, I'm so sorry. I'm like, that's fine, but I am gonna ask you to pick it up. I'm not gonna bend over and like, would you mind please? And he said, absolutely. So he picks up my change and he's handing it to me. And he said, so how long have you been married? And I said, 15 years. I was in the process of divorce, but I don't need to tell that to this young man just because he's being kind to me. And he handed me the change and he said, well, your husband is a very lucky man. I just, you're a stunning woman. Thanks for letting me talk to you. And I was like, thank you so much. Thanks for picking up my change. Have a great day. Like it was a beautiful, lovely little exchange and I'm not gonna lie, it kind of perked up my ego a little bit. 10 out of 10 would highly recommend. Kept his distance respectfully until I invited him to approach me to pick up my change and hand it to me. And now a wrong way to approach a woman. I was at a bar for karaoke and I went into the ladies room. My turn was coming up. So I was kind of primping and brushing my hair and checking my makeup and all that stuff. And I walked out of the restroom and there was a man sitting right at the bar, like directly out from the ladies room, eyeing me like he had been watching the door. And he's like, like, like motioning for me to come over to him. And I was like, okay. I saw you and I had to say hi because you're like, you sing, right? I've heard you sing here before. I was like, probably, I come here frequently. And I do sing, yes. He's like, yeah, I was like, that's the hot chick that can sing really super well. I was like, thank you for the kind words. And he's like, I'm so-and-so. And I was like, I'm so-and-so. Nice to meet you, thank you for the kind words. And I did not get close to him. I shook his hand, but I kept my distance. I said, thank you again for the kind words. Take care, have a good night. And later on, I was sitting with friends of mine and he approached me and I saw him coming out of their peripheral and I looked over at him and he was about to reach his arm around and hug me. But I said, please don't touch me. Thank you again for the kind words. Have a good night. Read the goddamn room. Just because you tell me I'm pretty and talented doesn't mean you get to hug me, dude. Right and wrong. That was long and boring even at a higher speed. But let's start. First guy, super respectful. He picked up your change even though you told him to. Because you obviously can't bend over in front of him. You do know you can pick up your change without bending over. Yeah, whatever. It was a nice story, so I'm just gonna take your word for it. It did happen. Fine. Second guy was waiting for you at the bedroom door. He introduced himself and then later on, out of the blue, he just tried to hug you. I guess I'm gonna have to take your word for it again. Now, I've been a fishing 
coaching coach before and I give great advice and I've even been a life coach and again best advice ever but I just can't pretend to be a dating coach so there's no advice this is what I would do when it comes to approaching a woman who starts her story with misogyny I would look at her for less than two seconds turn my back and walk away and I know it doesn't really count as approaching a stunning woman like her but I guess I'm weird like that and before I move on because I made this long enough I wonder how lucky her ex-husband felt you know during their divorce If you want to see the person you're talking to is a red flag, look at their friends. There is a saying that your friends are a reflection of yourself. So my friend group switches if my morals and values change. And I think that's normal because I want to surround myself who can support me and who can encourage me to do what I want to do. If I were to look at somebody's friends and they are doing some kind of weird activity that I don't want to participate in and... I'm sure they will get like eventually influenced by it. So look at their friends. You started off great, but then it didn't took long until you've lost it. How exactly does your friend group change every time your morals change? And the obvious question, how often does your morals change? You want to take a look at my friends? Go ahead. I'm gonna do the same and look at yours. Another obvious question is, which friend group am I gonna see? The ones with morals or the other ones? And if by any chance you want to show me the ones with morals, just because why not? How are you gonna keep hidden from me the other group? The ones who you reconnect every time you want to go on a girls night out so many questions i don't even care to know the answers to men are this so goddamn stupid it physically makes me physically ill my ex-boyfriend was the most unstable evil demented manipulative narcissist mental patient i have ever met in my life evil evil like Mm -mm. And now, it is actually laughable, what, like, talking to a man while he's trying to hurt my feelings. I used to be kind of like on this, on that type of time with this boy, right? And I quit snapping him. He calls me, he's like, you're mad, you're mad, you're mad, that's why you left me open, you're mad, you're mad. Oh my god. Men are, are, are like uh, stupid, uh, she can swear, that's the only thing she does right. I had to leave that part out though, cause you know. But the problem is, princess, English is your native language. I can mumble some incoherent stuff, cause for me it's not. And even though it's not, I can understand that I cannot call half of the population stupid if I cannot put two words together. Oh, and by the way, narcissist this and narcissist that. I was about 90% sure I was right and I had to look it up. And apparently, playing the victim is a narcissistic trait. So so oh, there you go princess, something for you to consider before you record your next video. No, I just, I just need you to stop being nice to me unless you're gonna marry me after. Sounds good to me. I didn't feel like being nice anyway. But that's for you being single in your 30s. Funny how in your 30s you're looking for someone to marry you. It's when you say funny things like this that brings the question. Why didn't you care about getting married in your 20s? How come you didn't even care about me being nice to you when you were in your 20s? I'm also guessing in your 40s there's gonna be two possible outcomes. You can even be rude to me, I don't care, just marry me. Or the other one we've heard before, I'm happy being single, I don't need no man. Which one do you think? think he's gonna be i need a white girl with a nose ring to tell me what planets are making me sad it's earth 110 percent can confirm it's earth it's earth for you princess for him i'm pretty sure it's not for me i know for sure it's not it's some other things that retrograde or something and when the other one stops rising it's gonna be really bad Also, I don't know which man's mother needs to hear this, but ma'am, your son is a piece of sh You created a whole loving draw. Whatever that is, but leave my mom out of it. She didn't create it, nothing. I created it myself. I never tried to hide it, and I've been saying it from the beginning. It's not my fault you chose not to believe me. I need, I need you to be honest with me. Oh, I am being honest hey, with you, dude. This is gonna go a lot easier if you're honest and with me. And I, and I will, yeah, dude. Yeah, what are you? What are you on right now, man? Uh, cloud nine? What? Cloud nine? Cloud nine? No, what are you on right now? You one? gotta be honest. I'm uh, on one, dude. You know what be, I'm stop around. What are you on right now, man? TikTok. You said you're gonna be honest. What? Instagram. I'm all of them. I'm on I'm all not, of them. 
I'm not talking about your ass. Drugs. Uh, sure, if you got some. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. You guys party? Yeah, Sir, dude. Step out of the car. Yeah, some of them do party, but you're on cloud nine, all right. Anyway, this is gonna be the end of the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.